He's back, you know. I know. I heard he hasn't spoken to anyone. He talked to me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the center stage cast, Where Are They Now? Whether or not you admit it, you start thinking. It's just a matter of time before you're doing Giselle before packed houses at Lincoln Center. For this list, we'll be looking at the teen ballet drama film from 2000 and catching up with the actors and the dancers 20 plus years later. Do you remember watching Center Stage back in 2000? Pirouette your way into the comments and let us know. Number 10, Ian Bailey. Look, all I came here to say is I go to Columbia, pre-med, I have a clean record, impeccable hygiene, and here's my number. When he played med student James Gordon in Center Stage, Ian Bailey was just three years out from making his film debut in 1997's little scene A Better Place. But while not many people saw that movie, a lot of people have seen the work Bailey's done since, especially his television roles, which include a recurring role as August Wayne Booth slash Pinocchio in ABC's Once Upon a Time. I can get her there to believing. Trust me. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just that knowing who you are and your nature, trust is a big ask. Most recently, Bailey could be seen in the sci-fi horror show From, which premiered in 2022 and was renewed for a second season in April. You got your family with you? Yeah. I was wondering if you could point me in the direction of the highway. Number nine, Deborah Monk. You can't afford to be cavalier, Maureen. Your entire career hangs on what you're gonna get to dance in the workshop. Deborah Monk has been working pretty consistently since 1989. And even if you don't recognize her name, the odds are you'll recognize her face from at least one of her many roles prior to and after playing stage mom Nancy in Center Stage. Maybe it's as George O'Malley's mother on Grey's Anatomy, or maybe it's kissing Jane Fonda in 2014's This Is Where I Leave You. I guess this is as good a time as any. Did you guys not know about that? Monk, who was born in 1949, shows no signs of slowing down either. New Amsterdam viewers have been able to enjoy the versatile actress in her recurring role as wealthy hospital board member Karen Brantley. Thank you for keeping me accountable. That's my job. And every once in a while, it's worth it. Number eight, Donna Murphy. All the time I watched from my room, I would think of coming downstairs, thinking we'd meet, thinking you'd look at me. Donna Murphy has been nominated for an impressive five Tony Awards and has taken home two wins for Best Actress in a Musical. And while most of her awards have come from her performance on the stage, she's done plenty of work on the small screen and the silver one as well. It's a good thing I didn't step on one of your feet and you could sue me. Don't worry, they're not as valuable as they used to be. Murphy will be familiar to center stage fans for playing ballet teacher Juliette Simone, and Disney fans will recognize her voice as that of Mother Gothel from Tangled. You know what I see? I see a strong, confident, beautiful young lady. <laughs> oh, look, you're here too. <laughs> As we begin the 2020s, fans of the Gilded Age will know her as American socialite Caroline Astor. Didn't it ever worry you that I might decide to destroy you after this evening? Because I could if I chose. Number seven, Julie Kent. Hi girls, Maureen, Anna. Julie Kent has only appeared in two theatrical movies and played a dancer in each one. In 1987, she starred alongside Mikhail Baryshnikov in the film Dancers, and 13 years later, she danced again on screen as Kathleen Donahue in Center Stage. You are in big trouble. She's in my ballet. Please. She's a heartbeat away from Chet doing her name on her ass. Kent didn't just play a dancer in the movies, she played one in real life as well. From 1993 to 2015, Kent was a principal dancer with the American Ballet Theater, taking on roles like Juliet in Romeo and Juliet, Odette Odile in Swan Lake, and the title role in Anastasia, to name just a few. In 2016, Kent became the artistic director of the Washington Ballet. Sharing my love for ballet and 
helping to develop the next generation of dancers and making sure that excellence is felt. Number six, Susan May Pratt. Oh, she's so good. Yeah, just ask her. In center stage, Susan May Pratt helped Maureen Cummings, who, despite being a very talented dancer, decided to quit because it didn't make her happy. This is your dream. Maureen, don't just throw away your dream. It's your dream. And it matters more to you than anything mattered to me. So I did it, but I can't anymore. Unlike her character, Pratt didn't quit acting after the movie, and has continued to find work in the decades since its release. Although none of the films she's been in since have been as successful, and her television work has mostly entailed single-episode guest star roles. One exception is a three-episode stint on Showtime's critically acclaimed Masters of Sex. I'm not exaggerating, Lib, when I say that all the girls were jealous. Number five. Sasha Radetzky. Fresh meat. In the middle. Oops. Who is he? Charlie from Seattle. Like some others in the center stage cast, Radetzky was a professional ballet dancer when he was hired to play Charlie Sims, the talented dancer who ends up dating the film's lead protagonist, Jody Sawyer. Radetzky joined American Ballet Theater in 1995, became a soloist in 2003, and retired from dancing in 2014. With his newfound free time, Radetzky got back into acting, and in 2015, starred as Ross, a ballet dancer, in the star's miniseries Flesh and Bone. He doesn't have that many things in his life. Women, ballet, drugs were part of his history, um, and he pursues all of them um, quite vigorously. He hasn't acted since 2016, but he's still very much involved in the world of ballet. In 2018, Radetzky became the artistic director of the American Ballet Theater's studio company. Whatever you feel, just dance it. Number four, Ethan Stiefel. Well, this is an honor, Cooper. I am without a doubt your biggest fan. <laughs> Ethan Stiefel began his ballet journey at eight years old, and it's a journey that took him all the way to the American Ballet Theater, where he was a principal dancer from 1997 until 2012. His journey continued to New Zealand, where he was the artistic director of the Royal New Zealand Ballet for three years, and in 2021, he took on the role of artistic director of the American Repertory Ballet. As far as his acting career goes, it's pretty much been all center stage. It would be great for the company. Jonathan! Steve. Well, if it's good for the company. I mean, you know me, team player. Stiefel played Cooper Nielsen, the best dancer in the American Ballet Company, in the first film in 2000, and he reprised his role in the subsequent made-for-TV sequels, Center Stage, Turn It Up, in 2008, and Center Stage On Point in 2016. If you want your students to dance my ballet tomorrow, they're gonna dance it with me. Otherwise, I'm pulling it. Number three, Peter Gallagher. It's a heady thing, isn't it? Being the best. Teachers dote on you, other students ask for your help, and an aura builds, and then you get accepted into ABA. Peter Gallagher had been working as an actor for 20 years before stepping into the role of Jonathan Reeves, the ABA's director and choreographer, and he's been working for the 20 years since as well. He's one of the few actors from the first film to also appear in both sequels, and to fans of The O.C., he'll always be Sandy Cohen. Sit down and listen to me. You can stand if you want, but you know how lawyers love to talk. Gallagher is still going strong, and most recently, he could be seen in recurring roles in both Grace and Frankie and Grey's Anatomy. So you can imagine my delight right now. You are brilliant and charming, Dr. Shepard. Number two, Zoe Saldana. Ready, second group. Oh, where did she come from? Except for two episodes of Law & Order in 1999, Center Stage was the first time people had seen Zoe Saldana on screen. And while she was a completely unknown entity at the time, she has now been seen on screen by more people than almost anyone in the history of the movies. I see you. I see you. With her roles in Avatar, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame, Saldana has been in three of the five biggest grossing movies ever, something that no other actor has ever done. And with a couple of new Avatar movies on the horizon, as well as a role in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Saldana's box office future looks very bright. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Amanda Shaw. In the middle, number 15. Not enough turnout. Bad feet. But look at her. When she was cast as the lead in Center Stage, it was Amanda Shaw's first acting gig. Until then, Shaw had spent her life focused on ballet rather than acting, and was an apprentice with the San Francisco Ballet when she landed the role. Miss King, you're doing a piece with the two of us. What piece? A totally new ballet. A world you're premiere. Kidding. Made on us. Following the release of the film, Shaw became a full-time member of the SFB, and was there until she retired from the company in 2006. After that, her acting work picked up again, and she's been working as such ever since, most notably as part of the main cast in the television show's 12 Monkeys and Suits. Keep an eye on what they're doing while at the same time limit their understanding of what we're doing. How do you know all that? It's my job. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.